Um, so good afternoon and thank you for joining me today uh, for Seafood Industry Australia's Australia UK Free Trade Agreement webinar with Austrade. My name is Veronica Papacosta and I'm the CEO of Seafood Industry Australia, the national peak body representing Australia's commercial seafood industry across wild catch aquaculture in the post harvest sector. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we, which I'm sitting today, um, which is the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. As always, I encourage you to identify the traditional owners of the land that you're joining us from today in the chat function. Um, as I said, we are recording the webinar today, uh, so just as a, as a courtesy, we provide that notice. So I'd like to start by thanking the Austrade, Australia and UK teams for making themselves available for this webinar event. And I extend a very special thank you to our Austrade Trade Commissioner, Anna Nishi Anzi, I hope I've pronounced that okay, uh, and the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry, Seafood Export Facilitator, Lisa McKenzie for presenting today. So welcome to you both and thank you very much for your time. Um, as a, by way of introduction and for, for those of, of us listening who may need a um, bit of background, the Australian UK Free Trade Agreement is expected to create a huge wealth of opportunities for the Australian seafood industry in the UK market. The agreement will eliminate tariffs on Australian seafood exports to the UK, including lobster and fish, fin fish, on entry into force last week, and the remaining tariffs will be eliminated over a three year period. Our great Australian seafood producers now have access to more, more than 65 million UK consumers who value our safe, healthy and, and highly sustainable great Australian seafood. Uh, and while UK consumers will have a, and, and UK consumers will now have access to that seafood um, tariff free. So this move will help to increase the competitiveness of Australian seafood in the UK market and will provide new opportunities for Australian seafood companies to extend, expand their international operations and diversify their markets. We do have a number of Austrade and Trade Start team joining us today, and I want to let you know, I'm just letting them know about a new resource um, that Seafood Industry Australia has developed to assist you in bringing Australian seafood to international markets. We are currently in the soft launch phase of our Australian Seafood Supplier Directory. This is a web-based directory of all Australian seafood exporters. Uh, we're really excited about this. This is a development that we uh, that we made under the ATMAC fund um, that was um, very generously provided by the Australian Department of Agriculture. The directory is available at the website address greataustralianseafood.com. Jess, we might drop that link into the chat as by for quick access. Uh, the, the platform um, provides an interactive map where users have the opportunity to explore the places and the people and meet the people who bring you the bring you sustainable great Australian seafood. So please take it take a moment to have a look at the site. Um, and for those in industry as well, please reach out to us if you have any comments or or any producers that you think we may have missed. So I think that link's gone into the site. So without further ado, I would like to hand over to our Austrade Commissioner, Anna Nishni Anizi, um, who would like to provide an overview of the AUK Free Trade Agreement and discuss the opportunities for Australian producers. Thank you, Anna. Thanks very much, Veronica. Uh, lovely to see so many of you online. Um, I'm actually in a hotel room in Amsterdam, so apologies for uh, uh, background, uh, and I hope there's no issues with connectivity, but we should be okay. So I'm going to give it a go with sharing the slides as well. Um, but uh, firstly, I'd like to also call out Patrick Kierens, who is online from our team at Australia as well. Uh, all the difficult questions, please direct them to Patrick. Um, uh, but uh, and big, big thank you to Veronica and Jess uh, for uh, allowing us to present to you today. Um, as Veronica pointed out, the free trade agreement entered into force last week and uh, the um, Super Industry of Australia were very quick to jump on the opportunity for us to bring this webinar to you. Obviously, the agreement covers a number of different sectors and industries and this is the first industry briefing we're doing. So um, it's very much hot off the press and, uh, uh, you know, it was great to see uh, the, the seafood industry move so quickly to bring us all together. 
today to talk about the free trade agreement and opportunities in the UK. Um, so I hope you can see my slides. Uh, um, I'll run through them pretty quickly. Probably a lot of information is not new. Um, and then obviously at the end, we'll be very happy to take some questions and deep dive into things a bit further. So uh, the first uh, kind of slide, uh, it's, it, it really highlights uh, and shows to you that at the moment, if we think about the UK and we think about uh, Australian seafood exports to the UK, uh, UK is not actually even, even in a top 10 um, for Australia. There's obviously uh, players there that we would all expect. So China, Asian markets, um, US, uh, but Australia is not in a top, uh, but UK is not in a top 10, um, which is, I guess, when you think about the close ties and relationships between our countries, uh, could be somewhat surprising, um, but also, I guess, because of the distance and the complexities and the tariffs that have been in place, for many years, um, or not really surprising in that sense either. And um, uh, hopefully the free trade agreement will help us uh, change that and come back to the volumes and levels of exports uh, that we had about 30 years ago uh, uh, when, um, uh, you know, when, with, when there was a lot more flows of trade between Australia and the UK. Uh, if we do look at uh, Europe as a bit of a collective, then we do make it into the top 10, but just. Um, and still uh, with UK only being 0.1%. Uh, so, I mean, you know, it's not even 1% um, that we are currently exporting to the UK in terms of Australian seafood, uh, which is a very, very low base for us to come from. But like I said, not surprising and clearly presents an opportunity uh, to do more on the back of the free trade agreement. Deep diving even further, you can see um, the volumes are very low. And look, I mean, if we think about why that's the case at the moment, uh, well, in the past, there were some significant tariffs. Uh, price is obviously an, an important consideration. And I think when you talk about the distance, uh, the freight costs, um, and then the expectations of the market around price, it was uh, tricky uh, for you guys to prioritise UK as one of the key markets. And obviously for the UK buyers and consumers, it also uh, made it really difficult to purchase and source uh, seafood from Australia. But like I said, we're hoping that that's going to change change. If we do a deep dive into some categories of what's currently coming to the UK from Australia, you see that we are only playing in a couple of areas. Um, so uh, probably what's not very clear from this when we look at HS codes, is that really where we're operating right now is some of those more, um, I guess, premium categories. Uh, so we, we've seen some fantastic uh, Glacier 51 tooth fish arrive in the market um, uh, and some more of the premium, um, various premium Australian seafood uh, products uh, sold here in the UK, mostly into the high-end uh, restaurants uh, like the um, Kingfish as well. Uh, but we are not really seeing, seeing border volumes across Across other categories, so uh, it is quite focused on that premium product right now. And uh, as you've seen from previous slides, the volumes are pretty low. So the good news is that uh, we do have the free trade agreement that entered into force uh, last week, and there will be significant uh, tariff eliminations. Our team have put together this slide really looking at some of the HS codes and summarising some of the categories. Um, it's not a full list and it's not a comprehensive list and there's a lot of kind of nuance and the detail across these categories as you deep dive into different HS codes, but it gives you a pretty good idea, I guess, what we're looking at um, in terms of various tariff reductions and you will see that they're quite significant where we're going from. 20% to 0% across some of the categories. Um, so it is, it is going to make a significant impact um, and it is a big change uh, and it will create a number of opportunities, we hope, for us to do more business with the UK market. So FTA will, will 
certainly eliminate those tariffs and we'll make it hopefully more profitable. We'll make Australian products more competitive. Um, but I guess it's not the only reason why you should be thinking about the UK market. Uh, we always encourage exporters to think about uh, diversification and really focusing on, on different uh, markets. And we do genuinely believe that here in the UK, there is an opportunity for Australian um, seafood, particularly as it comes to premium products. Uh, we're also seeing that there's an ongoing increase in terms of uh, um, like sourcing, importing uh, of seafood, not just talking about Australia, but really talking of the trend here in the UK, where we've seen increases of 2% in, in the last 12 months and also uh, projected ongoing increases over the coming years in terms of the volumes of imports of seafood uh, anticipated across the UK. We've also seen uh, a consumer trend uh, where we are seeing that consumers are more interested in um, uh, seafood for various health reasons. Um, and also in terms of diversifying some of their uh, diets and uh, various, I guess, uh, cultural cuisines that are coming into the UK market as well. We do, we, we were also, all, with many of you, we were at Seafood Expo Global. Um, so those that were there would have heard similar feedback to us. Uh, we are seeing more interest from uh, UK buyers in premium products. And the feedback is that the Australia does really have the differentiating factor when it comes to that. So uh, there is a recognition that our products have more premium high quality, and there's certainly interest uh, to look at the Australian products compared to some of the other uh, countries. Um, there's certainly more focus in the UK market on quality and taste profile, and it, it is a sophisticated market. So uh, we can really dif uh, differentiate ourselves um, uh, here in the UK uh, from, from that perspective. So that that's a real trend. Um, the other big focus here in the UK is sustainability. Um, it's a big uh, uh, talk across Europe um, and number of restaurants and retailers here in the UK uh, do um, value sustainability credentials that they include sustainability credentials on the menus um, in the restaurants or um, in stores. Um, on, on, on when they display products. So it is important to them, um, which means that Australia also has a differentiating factor when it comes to that, as a lot of you guys are doing an amazing job um, in terms of how you source the products, um, how you package the product, um, how you transport the products across. So that's a real uh, selling point for Australia and some something that can sometimes compete on price because we are seeing that well, the price is always a sticking point and it's something that uh, everyone always negotiates. We can uh, lean in on our sustainability credentials and um, ask for a high price um, because of that. So how do you access the benefits? Um, the team at DFAT have uh, produced and updated the DFAT portal. Um, so we do encourage you all to go into the portal, look up the UK um, FTA and look at various HS codes. Uh, we've in, on the earlier slide, we've summarized some categories for you, but it's not a holistic list. And certainly to be accurate and to ensure that you are looking up the right information, we do encourage you to go to the portal um, and have a look at specific HS codes as they apply to your product and see what the tariff change looks like um, for, for those uh, products. That information is there, um, so please do um, uh, go to the portal and have a look. And also there's a range of uh, useful materials and links uh, where you can have a look at other information um, in terms of uh, exporting to the UK and some of the steps that you need to follow and things to think about. That also includes uh, a business guide, uh, which covers uh, a number of different areas. Um, so things uh, like uh, originating certificates and um, uh, various uh, customs considerations and requirements are covered in the business guide. So we do encourage you to go and look at that resource um, as well. And it's very, very important that you do have um, that originated good certificate. So when the product does land here in the UK, they know that it's coming from Australia and therefore the new tariffs um, are applied. But I'm sure our colleagues from DAF will be able to give you a bit more detail on some of those technical um, requirements in a minute as well. 
So finally, I guess, uh, as I mentioned before, free trade agreement is just one piece of the big puzzle. Um, so there's a lot of other uh, considerations that you should think about. Uh, free trade agreement does make it easier. It does make Australian products more competitive. Um, you should think about how you apply the reduction in tariffs and um, you should consider that when you're having conversations with your uh, uh, buyers in the UK market, with your importers, distributors, in terms of how that tariff is applied and integrated, because obviously uh, you would like, we would like to encourage you to think through what's passed on to the buyer, what's passed on to the consumer, but also all what, what um, you know, how do you use that tariff reduction to uh, elevate the pressure of your um, business and particularly to potentially direct those resources elsewhere um, into market development work or anything else um, but there's also other factors like I said there's regulations there's standards there's exchange rates there's uh, I guess demand and interest for the product that needs to be considered um, obviously just because tariffs are removed doesn't mean that there's um, straight away interest in certain products and we do need to do some work to um, look at all of those elements and um, consider whether your product is the right fit for the market good news that's where the Australia team can help um, so whether it's our global engagement managers in Australia, um, our trade start colleagues, our business development man managers in market, they can certainly help you assess all of those various elements of the puzzle um, and uh, consider whether the UK is the right market for you and also help you navigate uh, all of those steps and complexities in uh, starting to do business with the UK. So on this note, I think that's it for me. I'll hand over back to Veronica and uh, I'll be around to answer any questions. Thanks. Thank you so much, Anna. Or as always, very informative uh, and well delivered. Thank you so much. We will uh, leave questions till the end. Uh, and now what I'll do is I'll um, pass over to Lisa McKenzie, who's our seafood export facilitator, uh, to present to us on market access requirements for Australian seafood entering the UK market. Uh, Lisa, I'll hand to you and then we'll take some questions at the end. Thanks so much. Hi. Uh, as we've already heard, there isn't a great deal of product going into the UK at the moment and not a great variety. Um, when the UK broke from the EU at Brexit, they pretty much adopted and continue to adopt the EU requirements for import from product from other countries. So around about 2021, they um, produced, we agreed a health certificate that's unique to Great Britain. So they have their own health certificate that you need to obtain to get the seafood product into Great Britain. And it does still continue to contain a lot of attestations that the product that you're exporting meets EU requirements. So they've adopted the EU requirements for the product in doing so. So for the purposes of exporting through our system, um, the agreement was that if a country, if an establishment in Australia was already listed for the EU and able to meet EU requirements, that we would list them for the UK as being able to meet the same requirements. It is a separate listing process. At the moment, the EU um, have brought in traces, which is an entirely electronic system of applying for an export permit with us and then transferring the required information through a system called traces to the EU. Um, because of this end-to-end -end electronic certification system with the EU, if someone wants to come on board with the EU, we can do it fairly quickly and register them through the traces system. However, the UK is still using a method similar for listing establishments as the old previous EU system. So if you want to go to the UK, be prepared to make sure that the product that you're sourcing is from an establishment that is UK listed. And they need to be aware of whether they're UK listed or not. If they're not and they're already EU listed, that's no problem for us, but it may take a couple of weeks for that listing to come through. And there are links on our website to where you can look to see that listing to to actually check. So similar to the old EU system and the traces system, 
they have a web page where it says, okay, these are the companies in Australia that are listed and able to export seafood to the UK. So having said that, it's really similar to the sort of discussions we had before sending product to the, the Barcelona and the Boston seafood shows. These things aren't always particularly easy and you need to be prepared because we've only listed, we've only exported a few products to the UK over the years and they've only relatively recently got their own certification. We do run occasionally into glitches and we also um, have additional information about that that we are updating in my course so it's available it's not current so it's a bit clearer but for all certain purposes at the moment the EU requirements for the product stand and I think that's the most important thing um, regardless of the trade agreement the, the requirements for getting your product out of Australia and into the EU or U UK uh, remain. It looks like the UK is still requiring IU catch certificates which is similar to the system in the EU where for some product lines IUU catch certificates were required. Um, we don't have a lot of experience of this yet because of the type of products that are going. A lot of them, are, some products, seafood products are exempt from IUU catch certificates. So it really does require that if you are going into the UK that you make sure that the company that you're sourcing from or your company is listed for the UK so that the documents would go through our system and that you're meeting essentially the EU requirements for um, microbiological sampling and testing, which can be um, different to the Australian requirements. Um, for information on the EU requirements in relation to the product, that are the same for Great Britain, we've got a very good micro entry explaining all of these things. So it's a matter of really working with your customer to make sure that um you're across the the requirements for that particular product into the uk but really in terms of the export documentation we've got to make sure that, that listing is there um that's probably i mean we'll add to our my core entries as we gain more and more information there's some information on the great britain's website um and I think one of the problems that we've run into is actually on the transiting of product. So when it's landed in the EU and it transits through the UK or vice versa, that's becoming problematic um, with some of the, the documentation issues. But the other thing of note is that um, for Northern Ireland, the certification is still through the EU traces system. So there are some complexities to doing this. And like I said, because we're not vastly experienced either in this area of getting it in, please make sure you give yourself plenty of time to get the documentation sorted out. Um, if you've got your live lobster on the tarmac, I may not be able to help you in a couple of hours. Um, so please feel free to give me a call as the seafood export facilitator and I can put my email link in the chat for that and we can do what we can to assist you with the nuances of your particular product. And looking forward to working with everyone and trying to find out all the wonderful ways we have to get all of these unique Australian products in. So I'll hand it back to you, Veronica. Fantastic. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I always love your um, passion and interest for exporting. It really is your favourite thing. Well done. And we get so much great feedback about your work. So thank you, as always. Um, OK, so um, I think we have now time. We now have time for some questions. Um, so um, if you would like to use the raise hand function uh, and I'll invite you to present a question to the Austro team. Um, and I think Patrick um, Anna's thrown you in the hot seat for some of those questions. <laughs> so, um, do we have any questions for the Austrade team? Lisa, I'll just note while the questions are coming in that Lisa's put her uh, email address in the chat, which is fantastic, just to help um, help contact.
No, no questions. I think we may have answered everything so well that um, that we did. <laughs> I think we may have satisfied all the questions before they happened. No, okay. Veronica, if I could, could I just reiterate one of sure. the points that Anna made about um, if nothing else and you're already doing business in the UK, make sure you use the FTA as a conversation piece with your current customers. Don't just assume it's going to happen. Don't let 20%, 14%, 6%, 2%, whatever the tariff step down is on the table. Actually have a chat with your business partner about what you're going to do with that money. It is accruing to them. So is it being passed on to their customer? Is it going to their profit margin? Are you going to split it? As Anna said, are you going to accrue a marketing fund to grow the market in market? Actually use it as a conversation. That's quite often our exporters don't take the opportunity to do that. And it's very rare for us to pass up a 20% on anything. So don't let it pass you by. Please make sure you have the chat. OK, interesting. Thank you, Patrick. Do you have any um, examples of where that's uh, other examples in other markets? I mean, UK specifically or give me a bit of give us a bit of background on on that as a concept. So um, going back to the North Asia free trade agreements of a couple of years ago, there was quite a bit of market, well, not market research, uh, user research, which was done at the time by PwC and other agencies or other companies. And one of the things that was quite startling was the low percentage of awareness of the people who own the product, you guys, the exporters, uh, and what it means to make sure that the benefit is actually taken up, uh, which meant that as those free trade agreements came into being for the likes of China, Japan, Korea, um, we just weren't having the conversation and all of that would have been accruing directly to uh, the importer's margin because we assume it accrues in market, it's applied in market, it's an in-market problem, it's, a, it's, a, it's our customer's issue to work through, but it's not. It's a benefit that's been negotiated for your product, so don't leave it on the table. Have a chat, see what you can do with it. Right, okay. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Patrick. Good, con good, um, good concept to for everyone to think about. Um, seems to be a hand that's going up and down. Is it Andrew? Yes, it's it's me. Hello, can you hear me? Can I can hear you? Sorry, I was having some difficulty with my Teams, and I was trying to raise, so I had to sort of log out and come back. But I can't turn my camera on. That's okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, really interesting talk guys. Um, I had a question for Lisa actually regarding the um, SPS border controls. I understand that the UK has begun the process of looking at a post EU um, border control system for SPS. Uh, do you guys have any thoughts about or have any sense of how that might differ from the EU arrangements? No and completely off the cuff and take it unawares, I'm going to say that I'd imagine it's probably going to take a little while if that is the case. Um, but yeah, for the moment that, that that's pretty much and happy if there's someone else on the call that can jump in and, and answer that question from their perspective. But at the moment we, we're sort of it's in the, the stage of shifting from the EU requirements totally across to anything that UK may want to do for themselves. Um, there is a lot of um, a little bit of difficulty, like I said before, with the transit between. So hopefully it's something that will smooth some of those requirements over. Great. And do you anticipate that there'll be opportunities for trading partners um, to engage on those rules? I don't know. That's a good question, but it will potentially affect the attestations that we make on our certification. So that's a possibility. If they make changes at the moment, they're sort of reliant on when we certify from the Australian end to say that the product meets requirements. It's, as I said before, on the basis that uh, of, e of EU legislation. So if there's a change to that, then the certificates will need to be renegotiated. So we will be involved to that extent. OK, thanks. 
Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Lisa. Kieran, are you um, you have a question? Thanks so much, uh, Veronica. I hope everyone can hear me okay. I'm also stuck in a hotel room somewhere else. So yeah, I'm, so I'm actually the agriculture councillor for the UK, um, notionally based in London. So just thanks, Andrew, for that question. Um, I will say that yes, absolutely, the UK is looking at um, um, where it can simplify, modernise, diverge its um, regulatory system away from the EU. We are actually very engaged in that process um, from, from Australia's point of view. Um, and looking to um, capitalise where we can to make that system as as, as beneficial to Australian exporters. So, um, and this is pretty much an open call we have to all exporters. If, the, if there are particular irritants that you do have in the system, um, more than happy for you to push them back to the Department of Agriculture. Um, and they're things that we do raise with the UK um, as they work through this this regulatory reform process they're undertaking. But I will agree with Lisa. This will take some time with them. But but the the earlier and the more often we can raise issues that we think are important um, that they should consider. Thanks, Andrew. Please, in getting them to change the system in a way that really benefits our exporters. Karen, we lost just the last the last comment that you made. Then, sorry, I sorry, and I'm also traveling <laughs> traveling as well. So, um, I was just saying, um. We are having we are having influence on their system, so uh, and we're having some success from some other commodities as well. So again, I just reiterate whether whether there are things that you think would benefit your particular interests, even an individual exporter saying, "Hey, you know what? This little thing is a real pain." Um, we can feed that into the system, and we generally, you know, we can't guarantee success, but we're having a lot of traction um, talking to the system about some of the changes. So. Fantastic. And Kieran, to send you some of those thoughts and comments, or if there is a situation like that, industry is best to send it to Lisa as a conduit. Oh uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I put my I put a little comment and my email in the in the chat anyway. Oh, but, you um, did. Okay. I think that makes sense to 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 put things through Canberra. Um, but people are always welcome to reach out to me as well. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, not sure we have any other questions. Just giving a few more minutes. We have access to all of all of Austrade right now, so it's a good time to ask if you have any thoughts or questions or comments. But we also like getting back time in our afternoon. So I will um, I will and, and noting that Lisa and Kieran both put their contacts in the in the chat, um, and we really thank you for that. I will say that that um, we're bringing our webinar to a close. So um, I'd like to. Thank. Oh no, Willem, you just got in before I close that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did. I did. Uh, look, I, I've had to had a myriad of phone calls going on during this webinar, so I might have missed a few things. But I just wanted to know: is there any live product going across to the UK from Australia? Um, I'm particularly thinking about mud crabs and things like that. Uh, there are some live rock lobsters. I had an inquiry about mud crabs the other day. It's not to say they can't, but um, I guess it's whether they'd survive the trip. Yeah, right. They're, they're, they're a pretty hardy creature. If, we're, if they were on a direct flight, um, mm. and I assume there are some out of, out of Australia, um, they're quite happy out of water for, well, several days, really. Mm. Um, the, the, the less time, the better, naturally, but uh, it, it's, it's doable. Mm, but us Queenslanders like to be a little bit warmer than than some of these rock lobsters. But I think it's definitely doable. Yeah, I, I might then ask uh, through Veronica then if we might get a a contact um, so that we can open a discussion. We do live mud crab out of Darwin and Cairns, uh, currently into Singapore, and we're looking into uh, Bangkok and uh, Taipei. Um, and if it can be done with you know that those that sort of logistics running currently uh, a direct flight out of the UK from say Sydney would still probably work. Um, and I have a feeling that Kieran put his hand back. Kieran, that's a new hand in response to Willem's comment. Thanks. It is. And sorry for coming back again. And so no, I think the answer is these things aren't generally a problem. The only issue I would say is um, 
you know, as we know, trading other markets, like whether the product's frozen, chilled, live, um, often they have different market access requirements, different different certificate requirements. So, so it's just important that you make yourself aware of those re requirements before trading. That, that's all. Yeah, got it. Uh, and Willem, to your point, um, I will, we can forward you, uh, in the chat is Lisa and Kieran's contact details. Lisa's probably a really good first point of call, um, but happy to, our team, the SIA team can forward you those details as well, separately in an email. Uh, and um, Arnold, you, yeah. Sorry, I was, I was just going to say, Willem, I think our team in Southeast Asia know you and your company quite well. So we'd be done, and probably what Anna's going to say, we'd be delighted to see what we can do to connect you with the right people in market. So um, Anna and I might be best placed to have that chat with you. Yeah, lovely. Uh, is it a bit easier if I just pop my email address in here in the chat for you? Why not? I'm pretty sure I know who you are and where I could find you. So I might drop okay. you a note separately anyway. It's, it's there. And anyway. I believe. I believe I've sent you an email already. Uh, yeah, you covered, you, might, you may have at least quite right, yeah. <laughs> You're All incredibly right, popular. Continue. You're incredibly <laughs> popular. And no no uh, less service than we can't, we've come to expect from Australia. So thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Awesome. Thanks, guys. OK. All right. Well, I think for a Wednesday afternoon, uh, it's time to bring our webinar to a close. So thank you so much um, to Anna and Patrick and Lisa and uh, and Kieran. Thank you for spending the time to explain that to us and making yourselves very available to industry. Uh, we, as an industry, look very forward to sending a lot more great Australian seafood to the UK market than we're sending now and taking full advantage of the UK FTA. Uh, for anyone who is online, Austrade or industry, uh, please take advantage of the link to greataustralianseafood.com and have a look at that platform and give us any feedback that you feel we need to see. And also the seafoodindustryaustralia.com.au website has more information. And um, please make yourselves, um, with any questions and, and any contacts that you need, make yourselves known to the Austrade team. As you've seen, they're very open and, and willing to, uh, to support industry. So thank you again, everyone. Thank you to our SIA members who've come along today. Uh, we appreciate the time.